to begin with, we use the idea of an old drama game whereby somebody stands in the circle, squeezes the hand, and the next person squeezes. Mr Painter, if you could just come over for us, please. And we use somebody to time how long it took for the squeezes to get all the way around the circle. I'm going to squeeze your hand, and you can squeeze then Ferrin's hand there. Lauren, if you can just say buzz, so we know it's about halfway round by then. And when it gets back to me, I shall say here, and you can stop the watch, and we'll see how well we do it, OK? okay. And then we could start to have something to compare when we use the rope later on. Go! <laughs> And we're here. Well, that time it was eight seconds to the buzz from you, but 24 seconds in total. 24 seconds. We're going to have to do something to speed this up again, Mr Painter. So I'm going to introduce a secret weapon. And here it is. It's a skipping rope. That's nothing you can do this. We now needed to introduce the idea that we were modelling electricity. You, from now on, will be a buzzer. So here we are. Let's put this round your neck. And because the child had already said buzz, it was easy to make her into a buzzer. I hope we made this string long enough. I am the battery. So here we are. I'm the battery and you are the buzzer. Has anyone got any idea what I'm starting to teach you about? Is it about circuits? Well, let's see. Can you say buzz when you feel it? OK, here we go, and... Here, buzz. Yeah, it was there straight away. Buzz. Now everything changed, because when the rope was pulled, everybody simultaneously felt the force. That meant that the person in the middle felt it at the same time as the person at the end, and they both shouted together and the timer wasn't even able to start the watch. Well, it was so fast, I couldn't even time it. Jack and Lauren seemed to say it was the exact same time, simultaneously. It was good for me, as the teacher, to be the battery, as I could control the tugging. And we made the point that when you switch a light on, you don't have to wait for the electricity to go down the wire. This demonstrates how electricity is instant. In floating questions, you have a box which has an object in it. Perhaps it's something that they've been doing recently in electricity or it's a newton meter, something that's hidden from the children. At the same time, you also have a dish which is floating on some water and some small weights. Does it conduct electricity? Yes. The children have to ask questions which can be answered with either a yes or no to describe the object that's in the box or to describe what it's used for. Do you find it in the circuit? No. And that goes in. So it's an object that does collect electricity, but you wouldn't find it in a circuit. Every time they ask a question, a little weight goes onto the floating dish. Is it a spoon? No. Can it power things? No. Is it tinfoil? It is tinfoil, yes. yes. Tinfoil was the object. You're just safe. Children enjoy this. It's really competitive and it helps them just to remember what equipment is and what it's used for. Would you find it in the kitchen? No. Does it produce light? No. This activity makes children listen to the answers from other questions and it makes them really specific about the questions that they ask. Does it spin round and round? No. It doesn't spin. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Does it heat up? No. Oh. There's only a certain amount of questions that you can get before the dish sinks and they have to identify the object before that happens. It was... a buzzer. Oh! Floating questions is a great guessing game activity. It can be used to interrogate any area of science.
This lesson idea involves hands-on science, it uses familiar objects and it is linked with their everyday life. How do we use circuits? I need you to answer this question on your whiteboards. First part of the lesson was to ask the children to find out all the different circuits they are familiar with. Lamps, torches, radio, laptops. Who has played the game Operation before? Neve, could you explain to the class how an electrical circuit is involved within that game? You have to try and take these little circle plastic counters out of the body and if you touch the metal bit, it buzzes and then it's connected the circuit. Birthday cards? How would you use birthday cards using a circuit? You open it and it makes the uh, uh, circuit connect and then that makes it all start singing. How does the, the challenge I gave to the children was to demonstrate how circuits work. So what should we make? Think around the operation. The children plan their circuits on their whiteboards. Yeah. yeah so you two. There's lots of discussion in the groups as they decide what to do and how to do it. And then, the fun part, the making. Go! I leave a variety of equipment out for the children to choose what they need themselves. We need to fix sellotape around it so when it does Beef. The electricity won't travel into us. Okay. Don't be scared to let the children get on with it. You will be amazed with their results. This lesson can be noisy, but bear with it because the children can learn and achieve so much. Yay! Everything's complete, but it's not working still. We might have to change the buzzer. It's great when the circuit doesn't work because the children then have to investigate why. Is it the buzzer? Is it the battery? Are the wires connected? That's the fun part for myself. A new buzzer in. Yeah. Once the circuits are completed, it's time to present to the class. In our game, you have to get this loop around all of this wire here. This is a great opportunity for the children to describe and explain how their circuits work. There's the names of the colours on the left-hand side and you have to match it to the colours in the face. Well, you have to put the one crocodile clip to a colour name and then match it and then it works if it works. We just did a little spinner and a little clown for uh, like a bow tie that spins. This is a great lesson idea because children are able to explore with the equipment. They are planning, they are exploring and they're learning about electricity at the same time. It links the science with the actual making and evaluating of design and technology. This is also a chance for the children to assess each other's work. Arrogance, well done. So let's have a little look. So put your finger on there. Right, hold hands all the way around. Could you do that? Yes, it worked. By going and purchasing one of these small electric balls, it really does make a great lesson idea. Put your finger on there. Now, everybody holding hands really hard. It didn't work that time. It's because Jack was holding hands through his jumper. When we connect hands, it actually goes right the way through, like an electrical circuit. And these two metal bits on there actually pick up the electricity and make the pinball ball. By separating one of the children, in our case, it happened naturally because of a sleeve, we can introduce the idea of a switch as well. 
what would be in the circuit to make it go on and off? The switch. The switch. Put your fingers on there, everybody, except Jack. So here we are, we're holding this, but the circuit isn't complete. We go round until we get to Jack. Now, Jack, hold hands. Lovely. The children were given a tray full of various artefacts. You can then ask the children to sort the artefacts into insulators or conductors. All the items were found around school, so they were familiar objects and easy to handle. Because it's metal. That would be in there. No, no, that would be a conductor. I think it would be a conductor though. Yeah. Because it's like metal. Definitely conductor. What would the pencil be though? Pencil's like wood, so I would guess it's an insulator tree. I'm not sure about this one though, because it's got like cardboard and metal. Yeah. So I'm not that in the middle. And now comes the great moment where we test them using the ball, of course. Electron paper, paper clip. Clicking, 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 clicking. So it'll go in the conductor. Yeah. So the pencil is not working. So it's an insulator. Well, I think that's a conductor. Yeah, that's a conductor then. If I told you that I had a pencil in my pocket that I thought would work, would you believe me? Yes. So yes. yes, of course you would. I would. So how is this one different? Well, it's one big got lead. like one lead, but it's sharpened on both ends. It's, it is. So we're saying that the outside is an insulator because we think it's made of wood. But what about the inside? So let's see. Let's do it on the wood first of all. So you put it on the wood. It doesn't work. Now, can you put it into the middle? And it does work. It's got something in it called graphite. And it will make a circuit. Finally, children were asked to use what knowledge they got to imagine what might be inside the ball. This starts to raise lots and lots of questions about the components of a circuit. Is there a battery in there? How does the connection happen? When you touch the switch, it touches the conductor. From this, we can make some assessments and also have lots of conversations with children. And it's really good fun. <laughs>